Hello, I'm Irma Baker. Welcome to our show. We're sponsored by RSVP, the Retired Senior Volunteer Program, which is a part of Mature Services. We like to think of our show as a kaleidoscope. That's what we're doing with our programs. We're presenting to you a wide array of interesting individuals, organizations, and activities in our area. And right after these messages, we'll be back with today's guests. RSVP of Summit County has been making a difference in our community since 1972. RSVP volunteers are increasing the quality of life by participating in programs and organizations that provide important services to the community. RSVP matches personal interests and skills with opportunities to serve. If you're interested in adding more meaning to your life and improving the lives of others, please call 330-253-4597, extension 166. Welcome back. Our guests today are Diane O'Neill. She is the Executive Director of the Community Pregnancy Center in Barberton. And with her is volunteer advocate, Pat Hopkins. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for coming out today. Thank you for having us. Well, we'd like to know more about the Pregnancy Center, and I'll tell you why. Our show is really geared toward older adults, mm -hmm. and I was fascinated to learn that there are resources for older adults there, and that also many of your volunteers are older adults. I think that we tend to think of a pregnancy center as some place where just young girls or young women come in, but it really is a more wide-reaching program. Diane, tell us a little bit about it. It is definitely more wide-reaching. We have in our society circumstances, I think, in these days where a lot of seniors are stepping in to raise their grandchildren for a variety of different circumstances. So we actually had a great-grandmother in um, week before last one day and she had her great-grandchildren with her um, because she has taken over custody of them from her granddaughter so um, even though she was in her 70s she wanted these children to stay together and so she was committed to helping raise these children and so we're there for young moms up to grandmothers who are raising their grandchildren absolutely I think that when we think of a pregnancy center we think it ends with the end of the pregnancy, but apparently that's not so with your center. Not so much. We offer what is normally termed Tier 2 services, um, so we try to help with any type of financial hardships that the young ladies are facing um, with an untimely pregnancy, so we assist with diapers and formula and clothing and all sorts of baby equipment on an ongoing basis. So as long as they need us, we're there to try to help with those things as much as we can. Well, that's really providing a great service to the mm -hmm. community because we know what a big problem it is. Are we typical of the rest of the country in terms of the uh, pregnancy situation? Pretty much so. I think so, yes. Um, there's an increase in unplanned pregnancies in the 18 to 24 age demographic, and, and we see that certainly at our center as well. Um, so we're pretty typical, absolutely. Well, where is the center located? We're located at 1058 Worcester Road West in Barberton, Ohio. Um, we've been at that location now for 17 years of our 21 years, I believe. So um, we're in a residential home. Makes it a little difficult sometimes because our services are spread across four floors from basement through attic, um, which is one of the reasons we're looking for a one floor larger facility so we're not <laughs> dealing with all those, you know, both for, from the perspective of our, our volunteers as well as our clients, just having to maneuver all the steps becomes we, an issue. You mentioned uh, providing uh, for the needs of the mm -hmm. pregnant young women. What is the scope of the services of your center? We start with a free pregnancy test for anyone who is concerned that they are pregnant. Um, we offer peer counseling, so our staff are trained, but they're not necessarily social workers or, or um, degreed counselors, but we call them advocates, and Pat's one of our wonderful advocates. Um, and so we offer them a variety of options. We, we help get them set up with resources in the community. We go over all our resources with them, what we can personally help with. We talk to them um, about some of the tougher topics that, that they need to be talking about, STDs and 
um, sexual integrity and things like that that come up. So we do one-on-one -on -one just from the perspective of a mom or a grandmother trying to help a young lady through and, and to give her advice and to guide her along and just sort of to walk that journey with her. Um, and then beyond that, of course, material goods support because many of the, the um, our young moms don't have the financial wherewithal, you know, and a, a baby's expensive. I think the conservative estimate's 160000 by the time, between the time they're born until they're 18 years old. Um, and that's not like with any kind of college tuition in there, that's really just the basics. So it's an expensive undertaking, and so we try to be there to help with the material support as well. Well, it sounds with the uh, material support as well as the personal support. Mm -hmm. I and mean, when you said that you try to be like uh, a mother or a grandmother to uh, these young women, that might be something that's missing from many of their lives? Um, oftentimes, you know, we live, our society has moved to both parents being out of the house working um, and, and a lot of single parent families as well. And so they don't necessarily have you know, a well-rounded or, or complete picture of what it takes. And our only role model in how to parent is our own parents. So sometimes we need to look beyond that. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons we're there, to help them have some resources that they don't have. Well, I'm so glad that you brought along one of your volunteer mm -hmm. advocates, Pat Hopkins. So welcome to our show. Glad Thank to you. have you with us nice today. Nice to be here. And uh, as we were getting set up for the show, you mentioned that you're from Wadsworth. Yes, I graduated from Wadsworth High School in 1960 and um, I live close by, I live in Doylestown now, so I have fond memories of Wadsworth growing up here. I was talking to my grandson the other day and he said, did you walk many places when you were growing up, Grandma? And I said, oh yeah, in Wadsworth. We walked to church, we walked to school, we walked everywhere we went because we had one car and my dad took that to work and that's the way it was. So. Was a lot of diff lot different mm -hmm. from uh, the way Definitely. it is today. Yeah, absolutely. But the um, issue of young girls getting pregnant is something that I think has been here as long as there have been young girls. Oh yes. <laughs> so, how did you happen to become a volunteer advocate? Well, um, first of all, I was an RN, okay, and I became disabled when I was only fifty-five, so I um, hadn't planned on that, but. You know, nursing is kind of a giving profession, and you miss that in your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, a friend of mine was volunteering at the pregnancy center, and she talked about it. And I had driven past and always wondered what it was all about. And I love babies, so anything <laughs> involving babies was right up my alley. So um, Judy talked me into going, and I went, and um, I started out as a receptionist um, on Tuesdays for a few hours and it was really nice and then they were encouraging people to become advocates so I uh, took training the training that we had back eight nine years ago um, to be an advocate so um, that's kind of good because I can fill in in either spots now I can be a receptionist when that job is needed and but mo primarily I'm an advocate there for the clients well, what does an advocate do? What's your role as an advocate? Well, you're really working one-on-one -on -one with the client. You take them in. We have private rooms where we take them. We ask them questions, and we don't want the whole world to know their business. You know, a lot of times they're a little embarrassed to be there anyhow because we talk about their financial situation, their education, um, their needs, um, their whole family structure, how many children they've had. Um, so we take them in this uh, counseling room and we talk to them privately and get to know a little bit about them personally. And then we tell them about the services that we offer. We give them one of our brochures with our hours on it and tell them about um, the fact that we can help them once a month with formula and diapers and that they don't need an appo appointment to do that because we consider those really essential things for babies. But if they need clothing, which is takes a, a long, longer amount of time than just walking in and getting formula and diapers, we do need to make an appointment with them 
for that. So a lot of times we'll take them out to the receptionist and schedule appointments for what they need. Soon our fall winter clothing is going to be coming out. So we have a lot of clients ca ca calling in and making appointments to get their warm, warmer clothing for their children. How do you get the clothing and the formula and the uh, diapers and all? I mean, I'm thinking when I see those in the grocery <laughs> store or, you know, in Walmart or, or someplace like mm -hmm. that, oh my gosh, one <laughs> thing, it's expensive, mm -hmm. and another thing, it takes up space. Well, you know Absolutely. what? There's a lot of love in this world, and we see it reflected every <laughs> day do. by the people who donate things. They mm -hmm. donate equipment, they donate formula, they donate diapers, they donate money, anything they can do to help, we very much appreciate. So that's how we get most of our things through donations. So if we have viewers uh, watching our program right now and they've got that crib or that bassinet or they've got uh, anything related to little babies, babies. Mm -hmm. uh, old uh, baby clothes, if they're in good condition, mm -hmm. they could bring them to the pregnancy center? Oh, most definitely. Absolutely, that's <laughs> how we get our donations. Yep. We're not government funded in any way, shape, or form, so we depend heavily on churches and organizations and individuals who believe in the work that we do and want to be there to help strengthen families, which is what our goal oh. is to do so. Well, I'm really surprised to hear that. I didn't realize that you didn't get any government funding. No, nope. we're a Christian outreach, um, and so we do get a few private grants here and there that we're able to apply for, but we get no government funding at all. Now, are you also uh, faith-based counseling? We are. We, we are a Christian outreach, as I mentioned, and so we do talk to our clients about what is, what is their faith journey like, um, what is their faith background. We encourage them to get re-engaged in whatever faith background they come from that they're comfortable with, um, only because I think many times we find that we can find a support system at our home church, whatever that church may be. Um, people who are willing to love you unconditionally um, and to also walk the journey with you and help you in any way that they can, emotionally, spiritually, whatever is needed. So, so you're not denominationally um, limited at all. Anyone not at is all. welcome any, to Anyone the center. who needs help, you know, we hope that they walk in our doors and, and give us the opportunity to help them. That's what we're there for. Well, I find it interesting that you say you talk to them about sexual integrity. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a, a buzzword. What does it really mean? Um, it really means living a lifestyle that is within God's will for a young lady. Um, you know, he, we believe that he has asked us to um, keep sexual activity within the confines of marriage for very good reasons. Um, and that's protection of, of each young woman's heart. Um, and so we talk to them about, you know, you have dignity as a person in and of yourself. You don't need to necessarily be attached to a young man in order to, to feel like you have value. So we do try to get them to recognize um, that they have value in and of themselves and that they're loved in and of themselves um, and to expect more out of the young man who might be interested in them. Um, and so to not, to not give in to to sexual temptation until a young man is willing to make a complete commitment to them in marriage. So we have to have that conversation often. <laughs> well, I know you have, have something that, that I found really fascinating. Those are the princess rules. What's that all yes. about? Yes. <laughs> Our agency is an affiliate of a larger umbrella organization called Heartbeat. And Heartbeat International has what they call the princess rules. So we, it's, it's really just to help us have a jumping off point. It's difficult to talk to a young lady about chastity, um, whether it's your own child or someone else's child. And, and we want to do that as best we can in love. So we talk to them about, you know, you are a daughter of God and he has a plan for your life. And because he's the king that makes you a princess in every sense of the world, word, um, we know that it's sort of, you know, kitschy in some ways. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, you know, I think every young lady wants to be, wants to feel like a princess and wants to be treated that way. Um, not a stick your nose in the air kind of princess, but um, to realize that she's due the respect and love that, that God has put her on earth to receive. So 
that's where the princess rules come from. Well, that's really something that takes it a step beyond just dealing with the medical or the physical needs of someone who finds herself yes. in, in the situation. Yes. And um, how do the girls react to that? Um, I'd say we have a variety of reactions. Sometimes they just nod and say, okay, okay. And, um, you know, we try to remember that we're there to plant seeds. We're not going to change someone's life in one 20 minute session with them or whatever. Um, but we gently encourage them and, and try to just move them in the right direction. Um, some are, are more, oh, you know, I don't ever want to find myself in this position again. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're more willing to listen. So it, it, it depends. They come, they run the gamut. They Pat, really do. has that been your experience too? Y yes. Um, some of them are, look at you like, you've got to be kidding me, lady. <laughs> you know, and you think, well, you know, it's something to think about. Your body is your own body, and you have the right to say, no, this is my body. And you, you d have the re right to demand respect for your body. So um, there's more to life than just sex. So um, they... And there's more to love than sex. I think that's <laughs> one of the ideas we try to get across to our young ladies as well. How long have you been involved? Probably yeah. nine years, about, I no, think. Oh, that's right. You mm -hmm. said it was about eight or nine years since you took the training. Mm -hmm. And have things changed over the years? Have you seen changes in attitudes or in the clients that come in? Well, first of all, the unemployment situation is much worse mm -hmm. than it was nine years ago. That's the socioeconomic status of our clients is just unbelievable you know they just have nothing they have no transportation they have to depend on buses now if you can imagine having a toddler being eight months pregnant taking a bus and handling a stroller and all of this you know and say it's snowing and it's nasty outside to get, get to us this is their only way is by bus then it's it's a big challenge for them to get in there so um and sometimes they have to rely on other people, and then that person lets them down. So uh, it's, it's really a, a bad situation because people just don't have the things that they need, the basic things that they need, mm -hmm. like jobs. Like jobs, <laughs> yeah. And that, I'm sure, impacts their ability to care for their children. Is that why so many of the mothers and grandmothers are now uh, having to take over the child raising job right and and some of these young mothers will decide you know like at two o'clock in the morning they're tired of being mothers and they just take their child and take it home to mom and say here I'm leaving you know mm. <laughs> and that we consider that an emergency visit we absolutely we would see that grandmother right away because she has nothing for this mm -hmm. child except the child mm -hmm. so it, it can be a big burden for a grandmother to undertake um, the raising of a child. So God love them, they do it. Mm. But we give them all the support that we can because it's not an easy role when you're 60 years old to all of a sudden be raising your grandchildren. Well, especially not if you've got to run after a toddler or you're <laughs> changing diapers or now right. hefting that mm -hmm. baby as it gets heavier and heavier. That's right. Mm. So. Um, well, how do people find out about you? Um, well, first of all, we have this lovely sign in our front yard. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people see that. A lot of our clients find out about us from other clients and agencies like their social worker, or someone at one of the hospitals might mention a, about us. So, but I would say quite often it's by word of mouth from a, a sister Most or often. an aunt or a friend that's mm -hmm. been in there. Do you find that... Um, People like, for instance, I'm thinking now the mothers have already talked about the fact that the young girls can be kind of embarrassed and uncomfortable as they first approach you. Do you find the same thing with the with their mothers who may be taking, you know, the grandmothers or the great grandmothers coming in to see you? But being, I don't think they're embarrassed. I think they're just so grateful that there's someone mm -hmm. that can help them. It's like, oh, finally somebody can do something to help Somewhere me with the situation, mm -hmm. right? It's like. Um, you know, a light in the dark. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Well, how can other people help you? How can someone become a volunteer with your center? Diane, why don't you tell us how people oh, can well, become involved? It's, it's very easy. You can call and we'll get you a volunteer application, or if you want to go to our website, which is www. Um, dot community pregnancy center dot org. There's a volunteer application that's easily downloaded. Um, generally, we take a person through um, a tour of the facility and we do a little interview with them and, and try to narrow down what type of interest do they have. Do they think they want to work one on one with clients? Are they more comfortable in the background? Because um, there's an awful lot of background work that keeps us going as well. Um, and then we make sure that they get trained in, in the area that they are interested in working in and we go from there and get them on our schedule. So we can always use volunteers. We have a wonderful volunteer family, everyone. It's a, it's a great place to work, don't you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> not, not like putting you on the spot, I've but made a lot it of is. good friends there because, yes. you know, um, you just get to know people that you're working mm -hmm. with and you realize how loving and giving people are. I mean, a lot of the women who volunteer at the pregnancy center also volunteer at the jail, at a, a, Do a jail prayer ministry group, and, uh -huh, and all kinds of things. So they're very busy women, but this is all in giving mm -hmm. in return for God's love for us. And we're supposed to love one another and that's just living life the way we're, we need to live life each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like your philosophy is one that is non-judgmental, that Absolutely. it is accepting people mm -hmm. as they are. Absolutely, and, that, and, and that's important. We need to approach everyone who comes to us, whether it's a volunteer or a client, um, from God's love. Um, and as long as we're doing that, we can stay you know, non-judgmental. We have young ladies who come to us who end up choosing abortion or perhaps they've had an abortion in their past and of course that's not the path we would want them to take um, not just for the baby but for themselves because the after effects are horrendous and can be lifelong um, and so we of course would would not want them to choose that for themselves but we don't stand in judgment of that we try to get them um, to a better place we let them know that healing is available um, to them um, the, those who are dealing with post-abortion issues um, and so we recognize the choice is theirs and we do our best to educate them on all their options and mm -hmm. um, walk with them in that so do any of them come back girls who have come to you for your services and then they have their baby and and whether they've kept the baby or passed it along to someone else or whatever do they come back ever to visit or to tell you how they're doing um, every once in a while, we have some who come back on a regular basis, of course, for um, the assistance with the material items, but we, we've had a few who, who just come in and they say, you know, I came 18 years ago and um, I wanted to abort my child and after talking with the ladies here, changed my mind and I just came back to tell you what a blessing he's been in my life and, you know, how things have worked out for them. So it's wonderful to get those glimpses. You know, we do our work knowing we're planting seeds, but but also recognizing the fact that we may not see how that ends up flowering. So it's, it's wonderful when someone comes back in those cases. So, Well, tell us again how people can get in touch with you. You mentioned your website. Do you also mm -hmm. have a phone number that people can call? Absolutely. Our phone number is 330-825-1900. Um, and so that's an easy way to get hold of us. And, and our website, of course, is another way of getting hold of us. And what about your hours? Our hours, um, we're open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, so four days a week. Um, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, we open at 11, and Friday's sort of our short day. We don't open until noon, um, although our administrative staff is generally there by 9 in the morning all four days, so you can always reach us um, between 9 and 4.30, um, even if the center's not necessarily open. So if you have donations to bring or you're interested in volunteering, you know, feel free to just ring the doorbell. We're literally literally in a home, and we, we do love that. I think um, it's nice from the perspective that it's a very welcoming environment to our clients and our volunteers both. Um, so just ring the bell. We answer it and come on in. <laughs> We're happy to have you. Well, it really does sound like you're offering a welcoming home for these girls to come in, these young women to come in. And it's not that you're a residential facility. You are no. simply providing uh, pretty much walk-in services or appointment right. mm -hmm. services, but certainly doing a great service to the community. So I thank you very much 
for coming and being with us today, Diane thank and Pat. Much. And we You're thank welcome. all of you for watching our show. You've seen it, our view through our kaleidoscope. We hope that you will uh, remember our sponsor, RSVP, a part of Mature Services. And if you're 55 or older, just remember that RSVP offers volunteer opportunities in our local community. And for more information about RSVP, do call the number on the screen or check the website. Thank you so much for viewing. I'm Irma Baker. Have a good day. Since 1971, RSVP has been matching volunteers' talents to community needs. RSVP is affiliated with the Corporation for National and Community Service, a national organization that supports service and volunteering through grant-funded projects. Volunteers organize neighborhood watch programs, tutor children, renovate homes, plant community gardens, assist victims of natural disasters, and serve their communities in many other ways. RSVP offers maximum flexibility and choice to its volunteers as it matches the personal interests and skills of Americans 55 and older with opportunities to serve their communities. If you're interested in adding more meaning to your life and improving the lives of others, please call 330-253-4597, extension 166. Distribution of this program has been made possible through the generous support of the Kaler Law Firm. At the Kaler Law Firm, attorney Jim Kaler helps seniors and veterans who need long-term care keep some of their life savings in the family. For more information, visit www.protectingseniors.com. The mission of the Kaler Law Firm is protecting a senior's life savings.